And thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, I'm Shelley Hughes. I'm, um, I'm our product manager for our occupational therapy and developmental portfolio here at Pearson. And I'm an occupational therapist by background. Um, and I'm delighted today to be joined by Dr. Alan Jetty, um, who is one of the main authors of the AMPAC, um, sometimes known as the Six Clicks, and the full name is the Activity Measure for Post-Acute Care. Um, Dr. Jetty's research, well, I'll just give you a little bio of, of Dr. Jetty. His, um, Dr. Jetty's research focuses on evaluation of rehabilitation outcomes, functional measurement, and the prevention of, and treatment of disability. He served as Dean of Boston University's Sargent College of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences from 1996 and 2004, and was Professor of Health Policy and Management at Boston University School of Public Health from 2005 to 2017. He currently serves as Professor of Rehabilitation Services at the MGH Institute of Health Professions. In 2013, Dr. Jetty was elected to the National Academy of Medicine, formerly the Institute of Medicine, and he is also Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Physical Therapy. So I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Jetty today for today's presentation. We've got a real expert here um, joining us. So before I, I pass you um, before I pass you on to Dr. Jetty, I'm just going to run through a, a brief agenda and a few other things. So today we're going to provide an overview of the AMPAC. We're going to talk um, through administration op options, through scoring and interpretation, and then um, Dr. Jetty is going to cover those first few things, and then I'm going to cover um, purchasing and using AMPAC through through Pearson, and we'll have time for we should have time for Q and A as well. We've got an hour scheduled for this. Um, I'm not sure if, if it will take up the whole hour. It depends on how many questions come through and things like that. Um, we are also recording it. So if you have colleagues who are unable to attend and want to be able to um, review this at a later date, then the recording will be made available on our website the, um, after today's session. It usually takes a couple of days to, for them to appear on our website, but it will be there. And then, um, as Sherry said, if you do have questions during the during the webinar, then please do post them. Um, if they're technical questions, we will answer them uh, on the fly. If they're questions that we think the, the whole audience will benefit from hearing, then we'll, we, we'll reserve those for the Q&A session at the end. And as, as Sherry said, if we don't have time to respond to them all, then we will definitely follow up with you by email afterwards, um, whether that's myself or, or a colleague will be following up with you. So on that note, I'm going to pass you on. Let me just forward to the next slide. Yeah, I'm going to pass you on to Dr. Jetty to, um, I guess, um, share his wisdom and expertise on the AMPAC. So um, Dr. Jetty, it's all yours. Thanks, Shelley. I appreciate the introduction and I appreciate the opportunity to talk about the AMPAC instrument and to answer questions that people may have. I'm going to begin by talking about traditional measures so that people can understand how the AMPAC differs from more traditional measures. We're all quite familiar with using traditional measures to look at patient outcomes. The way most measures work is that they consist of a fixed set of items, and those items are presented either to the patient or to a clinician, and all of the items are presented to be responded to whether or not they're appropriate for a particular patient. The way these instruments typically work is scores are summed across all the items that are in the instrument. A classic example would be the functional independence measure, and it's widely used in rehabilitation practice and research. They're referred to as classical tests. This next slide illustrates how a classical test works. You basically present each item. Let's say we have a subject who scores 73 on a zero to 100 scale. You get a response to each item, and then you sum the responses and you end up with the overall score of 73. That's how a classical test typically works. Each item in the measure is assessed and a total score is calculated to determine the 
the patient's location on the scale. Now, the AM pack, which was developed while um, I was working with the research group at Boston University, the AM pack is different and it's not a classical test. This was developed in the early 2000s and using funds from the National Institute of Disability and Rehabilitation Research and from the NIH. Now, initially, our goal with the AM pack was to develop a measure of function that would work across all different uh, patient conditions, primarily musculoskeletal, neurologic, and major medical. It's not condition specific, it's quite generic. And it was designed so that it could be used across different care settings to monitor function across an entire episode of care, which is an extremely challenging thing to do using classical measures. The AM pack was developed so that it could be used as a patient report instrument as well as a clinician or proxy report instrument. And our intent was to develop it so that it would be sensitive to clinically meaningful change. And we wanted an instrument that was not only psychometrically of high quality, but we wanted something that was going to be practical and flexible for widespread use. So these were very challenging goals that we set out to achieve. To achieve these goals, we decided not to use classical tests. We decided to use a relatively new approach called item response theory, or IRT, which is a different method of developing a measure as compared to classical or more traditional measures that you may be more familiar with. IRT refers to a framework where health outcome scores are item-based and not test-based, as classical tests are. Outcome scores are based on probability models that we use that represent the likelihood that a person would give a specific response to an item in a measure given the difficulty of the item and their ability level on the outcome being assessed. Now, in order for an IRT measure to really work well, we have to carefully select the items that are gonna be included in the measure so that they cover a broad continuum of an outcome. And in the case of the, IM, uh, the, I, the AM PAC, the outcome of interest is function or functional ability. Every item in the AM pack provides different information about a patient's functioning. So to go back to a similar uh, graph that I showed you earlier, an IRT measure works differently than a classical measure, and we describe it as binary in, a, in its approach. So let's take the same example where a patient scores 70 on a zero to a hundred scale. Unlike a classical test, every time you administer an item on an IRT test, you estimate the patient's function. And each time you administer another item, your estimate gets a little more refined, a little more precise and you keep administering items. In this case, we have three and four items. And each time you administer the item, you calculate the patient's score based on their response to each of the items that's been administered. And you keep going until you zone in on a precise estimate of the patient's function, and in this case, 73. And so in an IRT instrument, you don't need to administer all of the items in order to estimate a person's level of outcome, in this case, their level of function. So it's fundamentally different than a classical measure that you might be more familiar with using. Now, we developed AMPAC to focus on three distinct dimensions of function basic mobility function, 
daily activity function, and applied cognitive functioning. So each of these uh, distinct domains, uh, we have developed a, a scale of the AMPAC that identifies the level of functioning of a patient in each of the three domains of function. So we developed three quantitative scales and we could administer them using, as I said before, a, a patient report or a proxy or a clinician report. And the items are constructed in two different ways. Some of the items focus on how much difficulty the patient has doing a task. Other items focus on how much assistance the patient requires to do a particular task. We developed the AMPAC initially in a sample of just over a thousand individuals who were receiving post-acute care, and they had either major orthopedic, major neurologic, or major medical conditions. And we validated the instrument on patients that were at the point of hospital discharge. They were in inpatient rehab, skilled nursing, long-term care hospitals, home health agencies, and outpatient services. We built it and validated on the kinds of patients that we wanted the instrument to be used for. And as all of you in the audience understand, patients who are receiving care in these different institutions can be functioning at a very different level of ability. And so it's very challenging to develop one instrument that could be used for patients in each of these settings. That's what attracted us to the IRT approach. And as I mentioned, you can use the instrument with patient self-report or proxy report. Sorry, for some reason I got bumped out. And the way that we do the proxy report for patients who are in an institution we typically use the clinician report. And for patients who are functioning in the community who cannot do patient self-report, we use a family member typically as the proxy. I mentioned there are two different types of scales. To look at the assistance scale, we grade the patient's ability to do a particular functional task from total, a lot, a little or no assistance required to do the task. Higher scores indicate better functioning for help item. For the difficulty items, the focus goes from unable to a lot of difficulty, a little or no difficulty to doing the task. And again, a higher score indicates higher level of functioning. The AMPAC can be administered quite flexibly. I'm going to talk about two major ways in which we administer the AMPAC. The first approach is using a technique called computerized adaptive testing or CAT. A CAT administration is done at the point of care computing, and it's a tailored, individualized assessment where the computer algorithm selects the best test items from the entire instrument for each patient that best measures the functional ability of that person. And the selection of the items is done in real time. So CAT administers the instrument on top of a bank of items where the items cover a whole full range of functioning and every item is calibrated so we know the position of each item relative to every, every other item in the instrument. And they typically range from very, very easy items to much harder items. Now in the AM pack, as I mentioned, we have three distinct scales. The basic mobility scale, 
we have 133 items that could be selected and administered for a particular patient. And that covers areas of ambulation, transfers, bendy carrying and lifting, and locomotion with devices. The daily activity scale consists of 90 different items and focuses on tasks such as feeding, meal prep, grooming, the basic ADLs and IADLs. The applied cognitive scale includes 50 items and it focuses on communication ability, the ability to use print and other forms of information, the ability to follow complex instructions. These are the items that are available for selection using a CAT administration of the instrument. The beauty of CAT is that a very small sample of items can be administered from the large IRT calibrated item bank. The items that are administered are chosen based on how a person responds to each previous item. So every time you get a response to the item, the computer algorithm dips into the pool of items and selects the next best item based on the responses for an individual patient to the previous items. And testing stops when the person's function is estimated at a predetermined level of precision. So for example, in the basic mobility scale, instead of administering over 100 items, a CAT allows you to administer five or six items and get an equally precise score as you would get if you had administered all the items, which allows the assessment to be far more practical than it would be as a classical test. In this way, the same measure can fit patients at very different levels of functioning because the algorithm will select very different items for patients who are functioning at different levels. That's what allows one instrument to be used across the entire episode of care. For a patient in a hospital, for example, who's functioning at a very low level, low-level items will be selected. Someone in an outpatient community setting, a very different set of items will be selected by the computerized adaptive test. That's what makes the instrument possible to give you precise estimates of a patient function in all of those different care settings. Now, what we have learned over the years is that many times bedside computing is not available or not desirable and that individuals want to use the instrument but don't want to use the computerized adaptive test to administer the instrument. In those cases, we have developed a series of short forms that are carefully constructed out of the calibrated item pool in each of the three AMPAC scales. And we've constructed those short forms for patients at specific care settings. This is an example of a very popular short form. It's the basic mobility inpatient short form, referred to frequently as the six clicks short form that was developed with colleagues of ours at the Cleveland Clinic. Unlike a cat, a short form, like the basic mobility inpatient short form, pre-selects the best items for patients in a particular care setting. Six clicks was developed for patients who were in acute care settings. We looked at the characteristics of all 133 items in the calendar. items to characterize functioning of patients in that setting. Those items are illustrated there. So instead of selecting items in real time using a cap, the short form pre-selects those and you could use the short form instead of using the computerized adaptive test to score a patient on the same 
scale as you would if you were using the cat. This is the daily activity inpatient short form. Again, the six clicks daily activity short form. These are the six best items that we could find in the 88 items in the pool that best fit levels of functioning of patients in the acute care facility. Here's the applied cognitive inpatient short form and the six items that we selected for that short form. So if you're in a setting where a CAT administration is not feasible or not desirable, a really good approach is to use the pre-selected short forms that we developed for each AMPAC scale in different settings. By now, we've developed an entire suite of customized short forms. We have some that were developed specifically for outpatient and community-based care. And we have two different versions, those for low-functioning outpatients and those for higher-functioning outpatients. We have a, um, a short form we developed specifically to look at community mobility. This has been used in ambulatory care settings as well as in pre and post surgical applications. We have a suite of short forms for use in home health. And then we have just developed a, um, a pair of short forms specifically for very low functioning acute care inpatients. Now, let's talk a little bit about scoring of the AMPAC scales. You obtain a raw score like you would with any instrument. You uh, sum the scores for each response for each item that's administered, either by the CAT or in the short form in a specific domain. Now, in order to be able to compare scores from one AMPAC short form to another AMPAC short form in the same domain, for example, an inpatient mobility short form compared with a outpatient mobility short form, you cannot compare raw scores because the items have been selected, are, they are different in each of those short forms. You can, however, compare the scores on the same underlying metric by converting the raw scores to a standardized Z-score. And that allows you to look at the score as a function of the number of standard deviations that a given raw scores represents above or below an estimated mean. The beauty of a Z-score is that given a normal distribution of scores, we know, for example, that 99% of the scores of a group of patients will fall within plus or minus three standard deviations from a mean of zero. Now, when you use a Z-score where the mean is zero, you will end up with scores that are both negative as well as positive around that mean of zero. And many people don't like negative numbers. So to avoid negative numbers, we've converted the Z scores to a T score. And it's a very simple conversion where you estimate the Z score, you multiply that score by 10, you add 50, and then you get the Z score, uh, the T score. For example, if a Z score of 0.5 times 10 equals 5 plus 50 is a T score of 55. With a T score, the mean is 50 and a standard deviation is plus or minus 10. So a score of 55 would be a half of standard deviation above the mean. And in our case, with the AM PAC, we've estimated the means based on the calibration sample of those 1,000 post-acute care patients that were used to develop the scale. So converting raw scores to standardized scores allows you to compare scores across different short forms 
or with the CAT format. Now, you don't have to worry about the math involved in calculating these scores. You estimate the raw score. We take care of calculating the standardized score. So, for example, a T-score of a patient who may be functioning at a level of 30, we know with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of plus or minus 10 points that this patient is functioning two standard deviations below the mean of that calibration sample. This is a patient who's functioning at a very low level of functioning. Now, what I've illustrated here is a conversion table that we provide to all people who are using the AMPAC short forms that will take the raw scores shown on the far left column, in this case for the basic mobility six clicks short form, the raw scores range from six to 24. And then we've calculated the T-scores, which range from 16 to 57. And then we've also provided the standard error of the score so you have an estimate of how precise that score is. These tables go along with every short form. They do the calculations for you so you can easily go from a particular raw score to a standardized T-score. Here is an illustration of the basic mobility home score short form. And you can see if you look at the middle column, the T-scores of this one range from 30 to 70. They overlap some with the acute care form, but they go to a higher level. Based on our work, we've shown that home care patients tend to function at a higher level. So this form best fits those patients in that care setting. Now, when you first begin using the AM pack, it can be uh, a little challenging to interpret the scores. So in order to help people, we have developed techniques for helping uh, people understand and interpret scores. This is an illustration here of what we call functional stages, where we've taken the zero to 100 uh, range of scores for basic mobility and we've chunked them up into zones, and we've helped people interpret what a score means in each of those zones. So for example, if you look at the green zone, which is the highest level of mobility, 67 and above, that's characterized by someone who is getting out and, and about. Uh, they're at a high level of independence and moving about both in and outside the home. Someone who is in the 53 to 66 range of scores is doing okay indoors, but is somewhat limited outdoors. If you're functioning in the 35 to 52 range, the patient typically is limited in their mobility within the home. And someone who is in a zero to 34 is a very limited mobility patient. So in this patient example, someone functioning at a score of 24. As you can see on the thermometer here, they're in a very limited mobility and we provide a little description of what that means. This helps characterize and interpret what the scores mean in each of the domains. The advantages of using the stages is that you can get a profile of what an individual's function looks like at each of the stages helps you interpret it, but it preserves the quantitative value of the scale score so you can look at change over time or across an episode of care. So in summary, the AMPAC covers three domains of function, basic mobility, daily activity, and applied cognitive functioning. It uses advanced measurement methods, in this case, item response theory, or IRT. It enables us to achieve both breadth of measurement as well as precision. It can be administered quite flexibly, and it can be used to assess patients in multiple care settings. Shelley, let me turn it back over to you. 
Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Jetty. That was um, really, really interesting. So thank you very much. I'm going to talk a little bit now about um, purchasing and using AMPAC through Pearson and the, the options that we have available. So um, as you heard Dr. Jetty mention, um, the AMPAC has been, has been made available in a series of short forms, which are what we have available through Pearson, um, through the manual that you purchase and um, at one of my next slides will just talk a little bit a little bit more about that but just to summarize the different forms um, there's an inpatient six clicks and um, which is probably the most frequently used form and there are three versions there mobility daily activity and applied cognitive there's an inpatient um, short form low function mobility and, and daily activity Outpatient short forms cover those three domains of mobility, daily activity, and applied cognitive. Same with the home care form. And then there's a basic um, mobility or community mobility short form, which is um, a, there's a routine version and a low, low function version of that as well. So these are all available within the manual as a bedside administered assessments or um, in-person administered assessments, or even um, um, perhaps um, proxy administered assessments as well. So in terms of ordering, um, we have, you, you purchase AMPAC as an annual license. It's $189 per year per hospital or clinical site. So to clarify that, because this is a question I've had a few times, um, if an organization has seven hospitals, then you would have seven licenses for that organization. Um, all the details are on our website. There is an order form there. We ask you to fill out the order form so that we know that we're sending the manual and the details to the correct person who's responsible for managing and organizing that within their organization. And there's an end user sub license agreement that is part of the order form, which basically indicates that you are purchasing a one year license for access and use of those forms. Um, so in terms of what you get when you actually place an order and you um, request a license is you receive a manual via email. The manual con contains all those forms. So let me scoot back again by two slides. So all these forms are included within the manual and all the um, tables for interpreting those different forms. So you can use whichever form you require, um, depending on your particular situ situation or environment. Um, and then they are all within this manual and they're all reproducible within the manual. So some people choose to reproduce the forms as they are in a paper format. We do know of organizations that build the forms into their electronic health record systems as well. So there is flexible um, options around that to suit your organization. Um, as I said, as you, when you sign up for it, you sign up for an annual license, at which point after a year, then you um, would be renewing that license um, to continue using the product beyond that year. So that's, that's basically in, in terms of ordering. Um, there's some contact details here, and we've had quite a few questions come up. So as I, um, I'm going to ask Dr. Jetty to come back on now and I'm going to sort of go through some of these questions. I've had quite a few, so um, I'll, I'm just going to flick through them as we answer them sort of on the fly. So Dr. Jetty, if I could ask you um, the first one that I have here is what has been your experience of validity with nursing and rehab therapists completing the short forms? That's a good question. We have been working very closely with our colleagues, both at Johns Hopkins University and at Cleveland Clinic. And we've published several articles now where we've looked at the very high correspondence between scores on the AMPAC when they're administered by therapists as compared to nurses. Early on, there was a concern that nurses wouldn't be able to generate sufficiently valid scores that's not been our experience, and we've published those articles. They're in the uh, open literature. Uh, but the nurse therapist comparison has been primarily for the inpatient or six clicks short forms. Um, the uh, scales have primarily been used by therapists in the outpatient uh, arena. We haven't done direct comparison with nurses in outpatient.
Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Jetty. Sorry, I was trying to unmute then. <laughs> I couldn't. Um, okay, next question. How well do the short forms per perform compared to the computer adaptive test, specifically the six clicks short forms? Yeah, another good question. We have done studies where we've directly compared scores using the six clicks versus the computerized adaptive test. In the acute care setting, the six clicks uh, short forms perform uh, amazingly well as compared to the CAT. Uh, you do give up a little bit of precision at the very low and at the very high levels. And that's because you have to pre-select the six items using a short form, whereas in a CAT, the computer does the picking in real time. So you give up a little precision at the low and at the very high levels of functioning. But I have to say, when I developed those uh, six clicks short forms with colleagues at Cleveland Clinic, I did not think they would work very well, and I've been shown to be wrong in that case. Um, the six items do perform quite well. You give up a little bit of um, the precision at the extremes, but not very much. I've been very, uh, very pleased with how well those have actually performed. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, the next question, I think this was possibly, well, it was answered in your presentation, but I'll ask it again in case there's anything else you want to add, um, because it was submitted just as you spoke about this. So, um, and the question is, is the, so my British accent is going to say Z score, um, but Z score, is the Z score the same as the T scaled score? And as I said, you were just talking about this as the question was submitted, but in case there's anything else you want to add on that question. It's a common question, which is why I put it in my presentation. The T-score is just a linear transformation of a Z-score. So the, the characteristics are exactly the same. We do the, the transformation because people are uncomfortable with negative numbers. But um, it, it operates just like a Z-score. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, the next one. Is there any evidence specifically about the six click scores and discharge destination from hospital settings? Yes, the answer is yes. We've done a series of um, articles looking at the ability of the six clicks acute care inpatient forms to predict uh, discharge disposition. And um, those are in the open literature. Um, several of them were initially published in the journal Physical Therapy, and now there have been others that uh, have been published in other rehabilitation uh, journals, and I think one or two in the nursing literature. So, yes, um, they have been shown to be quite predictive, and like with most of the work on AMPAC, we, we tend to publish in the open literature all the research that's been done, and we've been publishing in the literature on AMPAC since 2003, 2004. So there's an extensive literature that you're welcome to, to search and, and pull up and uh, you can see those articles. Or people can send me an email and I can send you a list that we have compiled. It's not total, but it's a good list of articles on AMPAC that we have done over the years. Excellent. Thank you very much. Now, the next question I'm going to respond to here, because I think it's, it, the question is, can you review the low function short form mobility and daily activity? I think that was asking us whether we could review it in the presentation. We don't actually have it in the slide deck. Um, so I think I'll have to follow up with you separately, the person that asked that question. So I'll follow up with you after this session. So just know that I've seen your question and we'll follow up. So the next question is, are there functional stages for the AMPAC six clicks daily activity? And are there cutoff scores to support a discharge recommendation to rehab versus home? We don't have a specific functional staging of six clicks. 
it would um, I would take the generic um, staging and I would use that. Um, but we haven't developed those specific to uh, six clicks. Um, and in terms of cutoffs, uh, I can't tell you uh, exactly whether or not we have cutoffs. I would um, refer you to the literature. I haven't uh, kept up with looking at the, um, the discharge planning literature using AMPAC. There may be, I don't know. Shelly, are you there? I don't hear anything. Shelly, are you there? I don't hear Sorry, I think I may, maybe I, I, I just read out a question, but maybe I was on mute. Sorry, maybe talking to myself. Um, I'll try that again. Um, six clicks for basic mobility has the three to five steps bolded. Is this an optional scoring as it is not always possible to assess stairs in acute care? Yeah, this, this has come up um, a lot. We have handled the issue of stairs in acute care two ways. And I'll give you my, my preference. My preference would be if you're using the basic mobility six clicks, you should use your clinical judgment and score a patient's ability to climb three to five steps with a railing based on your knowledge of that patient knowing that for most patients, you can't observe that function. However, we have developed, and in the manual, you will see there is a five item version of the basic mobility acute care inpatient form that you can use and that enables you to score mobility in the absence of the stairs item. It's not as precise, as the full-blown six clicks, which is why that's the one that I recommend that you use. But it's there, and there is the, uh, the scoring table available if you so choose to use the five-item short form. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. Next question. Is there any correlation with risk for falls? Um, that, that's a question I can't answer. I don't recall whether or not that's been studied using AMPAC. We know function is related to risk of fall, so I suspect it would be. But I don't recall any literature that I um, have either participated in or can recall where they've looked specifically at risk of falling. It may be out there, but I'm sorry, I, I'm not uh, able to answer that. Okay, that's, that's great. Um, okay, the next one. Are the low-function short-form AMPAC assessments meant for a specific patient population, for example, coma stimulation or low neurological patients? The, um, the AMPAC was developed using patients with major orthopedic, major neurologic, and major medical conditions. It's been used across the years with even broader patient populations. But um, we've done studies, for example, using it with patients who've suffered a stroke at very low levels of functioning, and it works uh, quite well. It's, uh, we developed the low function version of the inpatient uh, forms that include uh, two additional items to the original six clicks. And those have been used quite well now with patients who are in the ICU. And um, the beauty of that is that you can assess function of an ICU patient using the same metric and continue to use that metric as they move on out of the ICU uh, through discharge and into post-acute care. 
So uh, it's used quite broadly. I won't say it can be used in 100% of patient uh, populations, but we cover the major conditions that um, adults present with. Excellent. Thank you, Alan. So the next one relates to a slide. I'm going to bring the slide up here in the presentation, um, which is the functional stages. So it says, which scores, raw T-scores or, or Z-scores, were on the temperature scale slide that identified how well the patient would function? So I've got that slide on the screen right now to assist. Well, as you can see, the scale ranges from 0 to 100. And so the green range are the scores that represent very high levels of functioning, so 67 and above on the T-scale. The mid-range, 53 to 65, characterized in yellow, where they're functioning very well indoors, have some limitation outdoors. So those two colors, the range of 53 and above, are your higher functioning patients. The 52 and below are the lower functioning patients. 35 to 52, which is the orange, is they're limited in um, indoor mobility, and the very limited uh, patients are in the zero to 34. And comparable stages have been developed for the daily activity and the applied cognitive scales as well. I didn't show those on the slide. Excellent, thank you. Sorry, I was struggling to unmute then. Um, so this one, would an item on either the basic mobility or daily activity short form that requires two-person assistance automatically designate a total assist score? For example, require, require, excuse me, requiring maximum assistance of two people or maximum assistance of two people to walk in a hospital. Would that re designate a total assist score? The answer is yes. We do recommend that people would score a patient with that level of assistance as total assist. Great, thank you very much. Okay, and then there's one here, somebody who came in late um, because they had commitments. Um, so the term six clicks refers to three test areas, mobility, ADLs, and cognition. Is that correct? Um, I, I think the term six clicks refers to the number of um, items in the question, but perhaps you can explain that further. Maybe it's my misunderstanding too. Yes, the, the AMPAC has scales in three areas of functioning, basic mobility, daily activity, and applied cognition. And so the six clicks inpatient short forms cover those same three dimensions, basic mobility, daily activity, and applied cognition. Great, thank you very much. So the next one, um, can this battery be used to make recommendations for rehab placement? For example, if someone scores between 10 and 15, they should be referred to a rehab facility, whereas someone scoring at five to eight should be referred to um, a nursing home placement and not rehab. Yeah, well, the answer is uh, no. The, uh, the scores, I think, are one factor that needs to be taken into account. And there are articles in the literature that talk about levels of AMPAC functional scores and predicting discharge placement. But as all of you know, who are clinicians, function is not the only factor that determines where a patient should go. You have to take into account um, social factors, as well as possibly others in making a firm determination. So function is a critical component, but it's not the only component. And therefore, you probably don't want one score that says you should for sure go into a particular uh, post-acute care setting. You need to take in, into account um, other factors. Excellent. Um, 
Thank you very much. So the next one, um, and I should know the answer to this, but I can't recall. Um, are the functional stages graphics included in the packet received when purchasing the license? Are they in the manual? And I can't recall if they're not, so hopefully you can respond to that. I believe they are, and if they're not, they should be. And um, yeah, that's, I have that's, to pull it up and check, Shelley, because I, I don't remember either, but I, they should be. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was trying to picture them, but if not, maybe we need to, to have a look at that. So um, we, we'll we'll try and respond to that. If we don't get an answer on this, I'll respond to this person afterwards. So um, um, I think we're both, both in the same place with that one. Okay, the next question. For clarity, the information on the functional stages is the T-scaled score, and is and it is from the CAT or from the short form. So is the T-scaled score from the CAT or the short form, and has it been validated in other versions, or is the validation automatic if the short form was already validate, validated against the CAT? It's a long question. I hope I read that out quite correctly. I can repeat it if needs be. No, that's, that's, that's okay. I'll try to answer it. Uh... The functional stages fit for all administration forms. So whether you're using a short form or using the CAT, the stages um, work. The stages were developed and validated empirically. We've written, uh, I think, two articles on the development and validation of the stages. And so if someone wants um, that information you can email me and I'll send you those references. Wonderful, thank you, Alan. So the next one is, what about bed rest? How do you score six clicks even when you think they sh they could get up but they're on bed rest for certain reasons? You need to use your clinical judgment if you're unable to observe a particular function. Um, so someone who's on bed rest, if they're not functional at all, you should score them accordingly. But if they're on bed rest for completely unrelated reasons, you have to make a clinical judgment. Brilliant, thank you very much. So, and this might be the last question. I don't see any more coming through, but um, has AMPAC been used to evaluate function in patients with progressive decline, for example, dementia? AMPAC wasn't developed for patients with dementia. I'm not aware of any literature where it's been used for that purpose with patients who have a progressive um, cognitive decline, so I, I'm not aware of whether or not it's been used in that uh, type of application. Brilliant, thank you very much. We don't have any more questions, so um, if anybody does have a, a question they need to ask, you've got about 30 seconds. Ah, here we go. Um, there's one here that's about how do you purchase um, the CAT version. I'll follow up with that person separately because that's not available through Pearson, so um, I'm not entirely sure. I, I, of the answer to that one off the top of my head, but I think um, I could probably follow up with you um, separately after today's session. Um, any other questions on this? Shelley, I, I checked in yeah. the manual and there is a section on interpreting AMPAC scores, section 8.3. Brilliant. Brilliant, thank you very much. I thought there was, I just couldn't remember it. So, um, so that's that question answered. So thank you very much. Okay, and I don't think we have any, go on. I was just gonna also go mention ahead. that there is a, a an AMPAC uh, re reference list that includes uh, almost all that I've been uh, talking about in the manual as well. Okay, that's super helpful. Thank you very much, that's good to know. Um, and we will try and, um, we're, this is newly available through Pearson, so we will be updating our information that's available through the website as well to help people. So, um, you know, as we get resources and build it, we'll, we'll be sort of adding that to the website as well. So, so on that note, I think we've answered all the questions. Um,
So I just want to say thank you to Dr. Jetty for joining us today and um, answering so many really good questions. So um, thank you to everybody for submitting all those um, really good questions. Um, and um, yes, thank you, Dr. Jetty. I don't know if you want to say a parting word. No, um, thank you for the opportunity, Shelley. I appreciate it. And thank you for working with us. Uh, we really uh, are enjoying our collaboration. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Likewise. And thank you, everybody, for um, joining in today. We have recorded this, as I said at the top at the beginning, so it will be available on our website. So if people um, want to review it with colleagues, etc., cetera, um, then please do. And you have, I think I'm just going to put the slide up there, my contact details and the website links there. And um, yep, yeah, thank you very much, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day.